Hey guys, Thomas here from Fast Track FBA, and today I want to go through some advanced keeper trading with you. So stay tuned. Hey guys, so today I want to go through some advanced keeper training. Now, before I start on the advanced keeper training, I just want to say if you've not watched my basics keeper training video, I would really recommend you watch it. Even if you have experience in analyzing keeper graphs, you've used keeper before, I would still recommend watching that basics keeper because what I'm going to do is I've talked about so much in that that I'm just going to dive straight into these. So if there's things maybe you don't understand or maybe you're missing, then go back and have a look at that. I'll drop a link just up above so then you can see that and obviously what you can do then is go back and have a look at that. But I'd really recommend just get that fundamentals, get that foundation knowledge right, go through that basic keeper training, and then this advanced keeper training is just going to flow so much more naturally. Okay, so this advanced keeper training is going to be about certain things that we're going to look at on the keeper graphs. Now, we're going to be looking at things like new sell account and how the number of sellers affects various other factors within the product should we say for example the buy box and also the sales rank but also as well we're going to be looking at when we're competing versus amazon and how to see when we should and how to see when we shouldn't compete versus amazon so let's get started right okay so here i am i've just jumped into a product that i pretty much always use it's a, a toaster a delonghi toaster i just like the product so let's scroll down to the keeper graph now and have a quick look at the next thing we're going to look at so straight away the first thing we've looked at before is should we say the amazon price the new price sales rank and the buy box we're really interested in that that's predominantly what we are looking at in our product review but the next thing you really want to start considering or factoring in is the new seller count so new offer count here and this is quite simply how many sellers are on this listing now right now if we scroll up it's saying new five i.e there are five sellers in total on this listing who are selling so that means there are five people on the selling on this listing right now who are selling this product and what keepers doing is it's recording that number so right now you'll see here it comes a new offer count is five now what we can see is we can see how many sellers have been on this listing over time now if you know if you know anything about economics or should say business should say talk about supply and demand when there's less demand and too much supply prices generally go down and obviously the inverse happens when there's too much demand and not enough supply prices go up so in your arbitrage business in your amazon selling business you can really start to understand about this should say use this to your advantage and spot the products which are maybe going to be hot selling items, or maybe you're gonna have a price increases in the future. So let's have a look at a couple of products now and just go through that analysis. So if I jump in here, what I've got is a product that I love looking at for, to do this exact example. So it's a Braun electric shaver um, and it's a replacement. And quite simply down the bottom here, we have got a new graph that we're looking at. So if I turn it off and on, it is the new offer count. Now, the one thing that you can see here is it just shows you how many new offers there are over time. So we've got like 17 here back in August 16. We've got here 10. You know, it's just showing us that number of sellers over time. Now, what I want to do quite simply is to just start breaking this down. So let's get my drawing tool out and let's take a snippet of this actual window and let's start breaking it down. So the one thing which I'm going to do is I'm going to probably draw a line down here. Now, if I draw a line, let's say for example, here, straight down the middle, and we've got two sections. We've got this section down here, and this is from like August the 15th through to October the 8th. And we've got another section over here, which is October the 8th, 10th through to November the 24th. Now, when I'm doing my deal analysis, or what I'm doing is doing exactly what I'm doing now. I'm drawing a line through the pink dots in my mind line of best fit. And I'm just thinking, what's the price? So the price here, let's just call it 17 pounds. What I'm also then doing is drawing another line over here. And I'm just gonna draw a line here. And let's do another example, and this is 25 pounds. Now, the other thing which I'm gonna do is draw a line down the bottom. So we've broken this into two sections. Now I can see here, this is kind of coming down. And then this section is here. So I kind of just draw them on, but if I kind of come back and draw it in the middle, 
And please excuse my drawing ability. The mouse is very hard. What we can see here is it's probably pretty consistently about 11. And what we can see here, let's say for example, this is 15, let's say 14, not a problem. So the question I'm gonna be asking myself is, what can I see from this product? Well, the first thing I can see is that in, let's call this section one, section one and section two, what I can see in section one is that the price is 17 pounds and in section two, the price is 25 pounds. Now that's quite an increase. That's a big difference in price. What can I see by the number of sellers? Well, in section one, the price has, or the number of sellers, sorry, has been about 14. It's actually been higher and it's trending down. And then in section two, the number of sellers is 11. Now, what does this tell me? Well, I don't know for a fact, but what I can try to understand is that in section one, there were more sellers on the listing. And I'm assuming there was more competition. What happened? Because of the increased competition, what happened? the price was reduced down. I'm not saying it was reduced down, but maybe that was the price it's selling for because there are sellers competing against it. And the market price selling then was 17. What's happened, obviously, because when you sell on Amazon, not all of the sellers can be selling at the same time. So the cheapest sellers generally, not always, but with the cheapest sellers or near to that will sell out first, and then the less competitive ones will be left. Now the number of sellers has decreased from 14 down to 11. So the competition has decreased. What's happened to the price? Well, those competitive sellers are now gone. So now the price has increased to 25. So what I can see is that when the number of sellers decreases, generally speaking, the price is going up. And obviously the inverse will happen when the number of sellers is increasing, the price will generally go down. So how can you use this information? Well, if you are buying a product, let's say, for example, from a big retail store that has today, has a really big sale, what are you expecting to see? Well, the number of sellers, the number of people who are buying that same deal as you is gonna go up. The number of sellers is gonna go up. What's gonna to happen to the price? It's gonna probably go down. I'm not saying it will definitely, but if we had to guess, that's what we would say. The laws of supply and demand. For me, when I'm looking at a product, I'm looking not only at the buy box price, the sales rank and whether Amazon's on it, I'm also taking into consideration the number of sellers and not just the number of sellers, but what I'm really interested in, the change in the number of sellers and how that affects the price and the sales rank. So that's a little bit about the new offer count and how that will affect the number of the price and even potentially the new offer count in a product. So let's jump back now and just have another look at another product. Not so much about the number of sellers, but something that you should be aware of. Now, one thing I always say to people, and this is a hard disk that we're looking at right now, is to say, look at the Keeper chart. Look at what the Keeper chart is telling you because every product is different. Amazon doesn't have a blanket rule and I can show you countless examples of products whereby what you think is true isn't. And Keeper tells you that. And by looking at the Keeper chart, you're going to understand that. So let's have a quick look at this keeper chart now, because if you're looking at this keeper chart, you're going to see there's an opportunity. But if you were to look at just generally speaking, you might think I'm not going to compete. Let's scroll down. So right now I have trimmed this keeper chart to certain dates because I know this product from looking at it. But if today was January the 10th, right here, what I might be looking at is to say, well, I can see that there's been a lot of sellers, it's come down. I can see that the buy box price has been about 75. But then also as well, I can start to see the buy box price is popped up here. It's gone up really high, up to about 121. I can also see Amazon's on the listing by the shaded area. And I can see the sales rank has come it was really low. It's gone up, down, up, down. And then it's kind of gone a bit higher now. But the one thing I'm really interested in this product when I'm reviewing it is that buy box price. Normally, when I compete versus Amazon, I have to be able to be cheaper than Amazon because obviously I need to undercut them on their own marketplace to win the buy box. But what's really interesting in this product is Amazon is sharing that buy box. Well, Amazon is allowing sellers to sell that buy box. So right here on January the 7th, we can see Amazon is currently selling for 87.57. Now the buy box price is 121.99. And it's an FBM seller, which is even more interesting. So the thing that's telling me is that for this product, Amazon is allowing other people to sell it, but also as well, Amazon is, should we say, they are not competing. They are, not, they are cheaper than the competition. And normally we say, if you are cheaper, you're gonna win the buy box. But hey, Amazon's like giving it away. And I, if it was me looking at this product, I would be asking why. 
I'd always ask why, what's going on. Now, interesting enough, I know this product. I've seen this product many times, and I remember looking at this product back in that time. Amazon was in stock. Most of the time, Amazon won't just give away the buy box. They will only do that when they're out of stock or when they're on back order. But this time, Amazon wasn't. So the thing which I'd really recommend to anyone reviewing the Keeper Charts is look at the Keeper Charts, look at what it's saying, and then question it. Question everything. Try to understand why am I seeing this information. So for me, what I was seeing in this product, really interestingly, was the fact that Amazon's in stock, they're not on back order, but they're just giving it away. They are literally allowing people to sell this product at a much higher price. Fantastic. We bought this product and we sold it. Right, let's have a look at another product. So one of the big questions people ask when we're selling on Amazon is, or when they're selling on the Amazon marketplace is, should I compete versus Amazon? And you know what? At one point in my Amazon journey, I had 95% of my listings had Amazon on them. I was competing pretty much against Amazon all the time. Hey, I was doing good money out of it and Amazon was sharing, they were letting me sell these products. Some of them they weren't and I was learning, but some of them they were. Now the question you've got to ask is, you can compete against Amazon, it does work, but you need to understand some certain things. So what I want to look at now is how do you understand if Amazon is sharing, allowing other sellers on the buy box, and what can you look at, and how can you use the Keeper chart to help you understand that? Let's now have a look at this product, this Logitech keyboard, to see how I know Amazon is sharing this product. Right, so we've just loaded up the product, and again, what I'm gonna say is that I've trimmed the graph to certain dates, just to make this example a lot easier. What I'm looking at right now is the graph is normal. I haven't got on the new off account. I don't really need it right now. It's not really relevant to the, the example. But the one thing which I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come into my Keeper graph and I'm just gonna hover over this buy box icon here. And what you're probably gonna notice straight away is there are some lines showing up in this product at the very top of the graph. What I'm gonna do now is take a screenshot and start annotating over those lines. So let's do that now. So what you're probably gonna notice right now is the fact that in this product, or if we can see here, you're gonna get some lines. So I'm just gonna take my pen out and I'm gonna say there's a line here. Oh, if I actually do a different color. I do this one, we've got a line here, a line here, we've got another one here, but I'm gonna skip that for a moment. One here, one here, and we've got another one here. And if I just change my pen, I'm gonna get this color. I've got one there, and one there, one there, and one there. And then finally, I use a different color, Got one there, there, there. So I can see these products, I can see these lines. Now, what do these lines mean? And why have I done them in different colors? Number one, they are telling us when the buy boxes are happening. So every time I see one of these lines, when I've hovered over this buy box icon, it's showing me there is a buy box here and something's changed about it. So the seller on that buy box has changed. The next thing is it gives me a color to say who is the buy box owner, i.e. what's their fulfillment type. So when we've got this kind of orange color, this or yellowy orange, this is gonna be Amazon. So Amazon is on the buy box, they are controlling the buy box. When it's this darker orange going red, that's gonna be FBA. So there's an FBA seller on that listing. And when we've got blue, FBM, it's quite simple. So we can hover over the buy box and we can have a look quite simply to say, is, you know, who is controlling the buy box? So we can see right here, Amazon's controlling the buy box. You know, oh, I just changed the color. We can say right here, Amazon's controlling the buy box. Amazon, this is an FBA seller. This is Amazon, this is FBA, Amazon, FBM, 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 FBA, FBA, Amazon. Because I can just tell by the colors. And if I hover over the buy box, and let's say, for example, we'll look at these two right here on the live demo. Let's go back. So if I hover over here, we're saying this is Amazon. And if we scroll over here, it's got that gold line, so voila. We can see that that is Amazon, and the next one should be FBA. Let's hover over that. There we go. You can see third-party seller, $49.99, FBA. Third-party seller, filmed by Amazon. Now, the question is, is what we really want to know, is Amazon sharing the buy box? So first things first, we can identify who is controlling the buy boxes and what their fulfillment options are. But the, to answer your real question, what we really need to look at is are there times when Amazon is on the listing and they are not the owner of the buy box? So if we look at our graph, we've got Amazon on the listing from here to here. We've also got Amazon on the listing a little bit here, you know, just a tiny amount and a tiny amount here and a tiny amount here, here, 
a bit more here. I'll just kind of leave that blank. And then we've got a big bit right here where Amazon is on the listing. Now, interestingly enough, what I can see when I'm looking at this section here, and if I literally just call this like section one, and this is a nice, easy to review, I can see that Amazon has controlled the buy box here, Amazon has controlled the buy box here, but we've got this nice section at the top whereby Amazon has not controlled the buy box. They have given the buy box to someone else using different fulfillment options. So what we can say is that Amazon is on the graph or Amazon's on the listing. You can tell that by the shaded area. And we can also say that whilst Amazon's been on the listing, they've given, they've allowed another seller, you know, FBM and an FBA seller to have the buy box and to control it. So when we're looking at the question about, can I sell against Amazon? What you're gonna be looking at is quite simply coming down to this buy box icon, hovering over that, looking at that, and then looking at what that's showing you. So these lines at the top, and then you're looking for those opportunities, those times whereby those lines change color, they are blue or they are the gold, you know, the, the dark, uh, the reddy or, or amber, at a time when Amazon is on the listing, and when you see that, then you can say, I believe Amazon is sharing. So it gives you a very good inkling to say, Amazon is sharing this product, and that's really useful because it allows you to know whether you compete versus Amazon, and that's gonna be helpful for you making buying decisions. So hopefully that answers your question. How do I know if Amazon is sharing the buy box? Simple, keeper. So now let's have a look at how to review sales. So the question I'm gonna ask now, or everyone's kind of asking is, I've got a product, I'm interested in it, maybe Amazon sharing, you know, the, the buy box price is happy with, I'm happy with the sales rank, but how do I know if it's actually selling or how many do I know it's selling? So one thing we kind of look at is using Keeper to help us understand sales. And if you don't know, in my first video, I talked about sales rank and what sales rank is and how that works. So let's go down now and have a quick look at this product I've just loaded up. This is a fairy non-bio uh, product. And we can look at, should we say, counting the drops, working out sales estimation. So let's scroll down now and have a look at that product. So if I have a look at the Keeper graph here, I've literally just got this in to today, it's May, and I've chosen three months. What I'm gonna do is just draw on the, the, the graph just to make it easier for you to understand. So what we've got here is that Keeper graph. Now, the one thing which I'm looking at is I'm looking at this green line movement, the sales rank. And what I'm trying to understand is what's going on with that sales rank and trying to count the drops. And I'll talk through what does that really mean and what you should be looking for and when it works and when it doesn't now. So first of all, the sales rank, what is sales rank? Well, it's the position of that product in the rank category. So if it's position one, it's the number one best selling. If it's 10,000, 10,000 best selling and so on and so on. You might have a product that is ranked 10,000 and if it doesn't sell, it's gonna be you know, 10,000 today. Then the product which was 10,001 is, is selling. So that's probably gonna move under and this is gonna move up 10,001. And then obviously the product is now like you know, 10,002, that's selling and that's gonna move down and this is gonna move up. So every time a product doesn't sell, what it's gonna do is gonna move up in that rank order. So you're gonna see that the rank order goes from one to two to three to four to five, so on and so on. Now, every time we see a product sell, it's gonna move down in that rank. So every time we see a movement down, it's gonna tell us there's a sale or more than one sale, but we don't know for sure. But we can use that information to help us understand what's going on. So let's have a quick look at the graph now and just try and map that and see what that looks like in real life. So if I'm gonna be really simple, if I just do it down the bottom here, is to say on our graph, we've got time down the bottom, and then we've got, if I do it on the other side here, sales rank. Now what's gonna happen over time, so today we've got a product, it's right here, and then over time, it's not selling. So we've got another one here, it hasn't sold, and more time's gone, it's still not selling, 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 and it's moving up. It's moving up in that sales rank over time. So, and what you're gonna see is you're gonna see this arch, this arch of a product. You can see that beautiful arch and that's gonna tell you that that product isn't selling. But the moment that product falls down, it's gonna tell you that it's sold maybe more than once or more than one product, but at least it's sold something. So every time we see that down, we are gonna see a product happening. Now that shape that I've just drawn there, that arch is something really important to look out for. So when we're looking at these products, and let's say for example, let's come back to this, this graph, what we can see here, if I just break it down into this section here, 
we can see these beautiful arches drop arch drop even a little arch drop big arch drop another arch drop there's some more movement down here an arch and a drop now for me what i can do is i can start counting these drops i can say one two maybe three four five six so in that period of time across here i can say i can see six possibly six cells at least six cells so i can see by counting the arches and seeing the drops and actually the drops that i'm counting is telling me there are six cells in that period of time so whenever we're looking at any product and we're trying to count the drops or estimate sales what i'm going to do is i'm going to break it down and i'm going to look for those drops and i'm going to try and count them now what i just need to be mindful of is that it might be more than one cell it might be less than one cell that's just going to be super interesting but it's going to be something that i'm going to need to consider so i'm going to be looking at counting these drops that's going to help me understand what's going on now the thing for you is to say that there are going to be times whereby you might be able to count the drops and you might not so for example i might say well, i'm not sure here well i can count these drops so say for example i might say that's one drop that's another drop that's a drop that's a drop that's a drop that's a drop and that's a drop so I might not know exactly how many it's selling, but I can have a very good estimation. So for so this product, I might say, hey, you know, I can see during this period, April to, let's say April to May, in that one month, it sold one, two, three, four. And if I look at May onwards, I can see one, two, three. We haven't finished the month yet. So it sold four last month. And in this month, in two, three quarters of the month, it sold three, generally one a week that's going to give me a good estimation of how many products or how many sales this product is doing. Now I know it's going to be at least four, but it could be more because some of those drops could be more than one set. Just be mindful of that. Now you might have heard people talking about doing something called looking at the statistics tab and then hovering over here, the drops, the six per month. Now just be careful. Statistics tab is useful, but what you're really looking at is counting the drops. Now, the one thing I should just say, and if you, what I'm trying to highlight is right here, this statistics part, six per month. Yes, it is showing you how many drops are happening, but like I've just looked at right here, that is technically a drop, but I might not class that as a sale. My advice is when you are looking at counting the drops, use actually the graph, don't use statistics tab. You can do a quick guide, but double check it with the graph. Really have a look there. Now, there was a point whereby counting the drops fails. Let's say, for example, if we go here, we've got a Lego popular selling product. FBA Multi Tool is saying it's selling one to 1,500 per month, like lots. Let's have a quick look at the graph. Voila, we've got the graph. And let's have a look at the statistics tab. Hover over. That tab is telling us it's selling or doing 88 drops a month. Well, you know what? I know for a fact that this is selling way more than 88 products per month. There's a real limitation in regards to doing statistics tab, looking at the drops a month. And for me personally, if I'm ever seeing any more than about 20 sales or 20 drops a month, you know, and I'm looking at 20 drops, i.e. that, and I can see the curve, I'm not gonna use the keeper charts. I'm gonna use a tool like FBA Multi-Tool. I'm gonna use maybe the Jungle Scout free estimator that's gonna help me understand sales. Counting the drops in Keeper is really good and really accurate for very low selling products. But once you start getting about above about 20 per month, counting the drops doesn't really work. So I would move away from using that method and use a different method. Under 20, Keeper, perfect. Much better than tools. Over 20, Keeper not so good, use the tools instead. That's a top tip about looking at counting the drops. Okay guys, so that is the advanced Keeper training. Now look, there's quite a bit to go through there. My top tip for you is go away and practice. Honestly, practice, 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 embed this knowledge. For me, when I'm looking at a Keeper graph now, I can do it in seconds, but it's taken me a long time to get to that level. For you, obviously, if you are just starting out in Keeper, again, practice, practice. There are good tools out there that help you out, but my advice is don't rely on them. Get used to just reading that graph because the devil is in the detail. You are gonna spot things that are gonna help you or tell you not to buy a deal which maybe the software might overlook but if you are looking at that data on the graph you're going to see everything you need to know so learn to read the graph all the information in that it's super key so hey look what i will say is hopefully you've liked that and if you have 
give me a big thumbs up, give me a like. And hey, if you've got any questions, maybe there's something I didn't go through or maybe anything else you want to know, or hey, even if you found it useful, drop me a comment down below. I love comments. It just lets me know what you're thinking. What I will say is for me, Thomas Parkinson at Fast Track FBA, thank you very much.